31, I had a question coming out of section 9.3, number 45, and this is where they gave us some terms in a geometric sequence. They specifically told us it was geometric, and they just said, how many terms is this? So at this point, if I take a look at what I have here, I know a sub 1 is equal to 2, right? a sub 2 is equal to 1, a sub 3 is equal to 1 half, and I just don't know what this term is, right? Is this is n 10? Is n 1,000? Is it somewhere in the middle? Like, how many terms did it take us before we got to 1 over 1,024? Well, I was told again that this thing was a geometric sequence. And any time I hear geometric, I know, well, the, I need to go find r, right? I need to, oops, excuse me, find that common ratio. And that's the first thing I want to do. So I'm going to take this ratio of a sub 2 to a sub 1. If I look at that ratio, a sub 2 in ratio to a sub 1, that's literally 1 half. And, and that's the ratio that, that is constant throughout this entire sequence. So if I looked at the ratio then of a sub 3 to a sub 2, right, that would be 1 half over 1, that is still 1 half. So that's what I'm getting here, that r is equal to 1 half. And we know a sub 1 is equal to 2. And when you're dealing with geometric sequences, those two terms, r and a sub 1, these are very important to have so that we can use them in our geometric sequence formula. And here is our geometric sequence formula, a sub n equaling a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in my value for a sub 1 and substitute in r. And that's where you see or that's what you see going on in this step. And the other thing that I know is that a sub n is equal to 1,024. So now I'm going to go ahead. Let me draw an arrow down here. That is a great arrow. I'm going to put that a sub n term as 1 over 1,024. Now once I've done that, we now have an exponential equation. And I say exponential equation because if you look at our variable, and our variable is n this time out, our variable is up in the exponent. So if I have an exponential equation, oops, excuse me, we're going back to all those techniques we learned about, excuse me again, in chapter six, we're going to go ahead and isolate the exponential term. And in order to isolate the exponential term, that means I really just want to get the one half raised to the n minus one power. I just want to get that by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by two. And if I take 1 over 1,024 and I divide it by 2, right, because I'm going to divide this side by 2 and this side by 2, the 2s are going to cancel out here. Um, when I take 1 over 1024 and I divide by 2, that's like multiplying by 1 half, and that's 1 over 2048. And that's where you see this number popping up. Now, for me personally, I like to have my variable on the left side of the equation. So let me just change color so you can see this. So that's why I wrote this term over here and this term over here. All right, so let me erase some of this because it's a little crowded. All right, there we go. So now that I have, oh, let me change my pen color back. Now that I have my um, exponential term isolated, I need to log both sides. And you can either common log both sides or you can natural log both sides. And I just chose to natural log both sides. It, it doesn't matter which one you do. They're both going to work. But once you log both sides, we have that power property from logarithms that allows me to drop that exponent down. And then you have to remember, and it's been a little while since we've looked at logs, that this, even though it looks funky, is just a number. And my variable is n. I want to solve for it. So imagine if you had something like this. If you had n minus 1 times just 1 half equaling 1 over 2048, what would you do to solve for n? You would start by dividing by 1 half. Or maybe some of you would distribute first. But ultimately, if I did this, I would get n minus 1 equaling, and when you divide by 1 half, it's like multiplying by 2. This would be 1 over 1024. But, but my point here is this term is a constant. So if I want to start to solve for n, what I need to do to both sides here is divide by ln of 1 half. All right, and I know that's in there pretty tight, but that's why you see the next step. So let me erase this again just so it's not getting too crowded. That's where you see me going from here to here, right? I divided both sides, both sides of the equation by ln of 1 half. And again, that's just because ln 
of one half, it's a constant, and I, I wanna get this constant removed. And then the last thing I need to do is add one to both sides. So then I'm gonna have, if you, if you don't wanna um, simplify it just yet, you could say n is equal to this huge ratio of ln of one over 2048 over ln of one half plus one, but this beast right here is just the number 11. So once you see that, if you plug that in your calculator and you get 11, you find out, n, oops, excuse me, n is gonna be equal to 12. And the cool thing about that is it is an integer, so this is a, a legit number to get. And why I mean, um, when I say an integer, n has to equal something like one, two, three, right? It has to be a whole number, and it technically even has to be a positive number. And what I mean by that is if you came up with n equaling something like 12.7, something was wrong. So when you solve for n, in these types of problems, it has to be a whole number, all right? It has to not have any decimals or any fractions after it. And, and this is the 12th term in the sequence. And if you had time on an exam, you could actually go and check this. And here's what I mean. So why does that keep popping up? If I scroll up here, right, I could go ahead and I could just test this out. So again, we knew a sub one was two, and then one, and then one half, and we know the next term will be one fourth, and then one eighth, and then one sixteenth, and then 1 over 32, and then 1 over 64. And you can see how many terms do we have so far? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we could go keep going. I know the next one is 1 over 128. That would be the ninth term. 1 over 256. That would be the tenth term. Sure enough, the eleventh term, 1 over 512. And there's the twelfth term, 1 over 1024. So because this wasn't that large, n equals 12 isn't that large, it wasn't like n equaling 1,000, I could actually check it in this case. All right, so there's number 45. Thanks so much. Bye.